Buenos dias. Soy Robert Sternberg. Good morning. I'm Robert Sternberg, a chair at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, in the United States. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity of speaking to you today. I've had uh, many links with Spain. I visited uh, Spain many times, but uh, I have uh, four-year-old uh, triplets today, and it's more uh, difficult to travel than in the past. I appreciate uh, the uh, possibility of being able to use uh, this video. The subject of my presentation today is culture and intelligence. And when you uh, study culture, it's more difficult than other kinds of research work. In Tanzania, for example, we've uh, done uh, research in this house, and as you can see, the house collapsed uh, during uh, the research. And uh, this doesn't happen in the United States or in Spain, so the context is uh, very different. I'm going to talk about uh, cultural studies, therefore. Point one is that uh, children and adults uh, are able to uh, carry out uh, tasks uh, in a cultural context, but not in another one. For example, Teresinha Nunez, uh, a Brazilian uh, psychologist, uh, did a study or several studies uh, with uh, street children from Brazil. And uh, the conclusion was uh, that uh, the children could carry out arithmetic computations when the computations were street computations, uh, practical computations, but when the computations uh, were at school, academic uh, issues uh, from uh, textbooks, uh, they uh, weren't uh, able to do anything. So their ability uh, to use uh, mathematics depended on the context. In other studies, uh, Jean Lave uh, from uh, California uh, University, uh, Berkeley, studied housewives and uh, their abilities uh, to carry out computations uh, at the supermarket and also in a classroom. And uh, she found the same thing as Nunez. In other words, uh, that uh, housewives uh, were able to perform uh, computations to compare uh, product prices at the supermarket, but uh, in the classroom uh, they weren't able to do anything. Again, the context uh, determined what they were able to do. Point two is that children can develop tasks uh, contextually at the expense of uh, academic tasks. And this is a study that my colleagues and I uh, did in Kenya, in Africa. And the question was, what is the relationship between practical intelligence measured by the uh, tacit uh, knowledge of a uh, natural herbal medicine with academic intelligence and academic achievement. In other words, obvious, uh, there's the IQ. It's an academic IQ. And there are also life skills. For example, uh, knowledge about uh, natural herbs uh, to fight against uh, malaria, cystochemiasis, and uh, other uh, illnesses in life. And uh, what we discovered is that the relationship is inverse. 
the correlations uh, between uh, academic uh, measurements of skills that are fluid and crystallized and uh, practical uh, measurements were negative. In other words, uh, the children that uh, knew more about uh, practical uh, medicine, their achievement was worse in academic tests. The reason is uh, that uh, the children that had the practical knowledge spent uh, more time outdoors and at home and paid less attention uh, to uh, academic subjects. The children that uh, spent uh, more uh, time in the classroom knew less about uh, the practical knowledge uh, to uh, fight against uh, parasitic infections, for example. This is a correlation uh, matrix. And the first column uh, shows that all the uh, correlations between the uh, academic uh, measurements and uh, tacit knowledge, uh, TK, all the correlations are negative. In other words, a uh, measurement of vocabulary in their own language, the classroom vocabulary in English, the total vocabulary, and uh, Raven matrices is a uh, measurement of uh, the uh, fluency. All the correlations were negative. So we shouldn't conclude that uh, if a student is not able to get uh, good marks in the tests, in the IQ tests, This uh, doesn't imply that the student uh, is not intelligent. The third point is that uh, children can have uh, significant uh, practical skills that are not recognized in academic tests. In other words, uh, the tests we use uh, at uh, schools and universities don't uh, measure important and uh, practical skills in everyday life. And uh, there's a practical and uh, academic uh, intelligence test in the Eskimos, in the UPIC, uh, in uh, the United States, in the Northwest. And the question is, uh, what is the relationship between academic uh, intelligence, uh, uh, analytical intelligence, IQ, and practical intelligence in the context of the lives of the Eskimos uh, that uh, live in rural areas of Alaska. And the answer is that the boys and girls uh, from urban areas uh, had better results uh, in academic intelligence tests than the uh, UPIC boys and girls from rural areas. In other words, our results uh, are the same as those discovered by others. In cities, uh, generally, children uh, receive more instruction that uh, prepares them for the tests. But the UPIC uh, boys and girls in rural areas performed better in practical intelligence tests than the boys and girls from urban areas. In other words, uh, the uh, rural children know uh, more about uh, fishing or hunting 
or how to uh, treat illnesses. And again, we see that the difference between the children doesn't lie in total intelligence, but the type of intelligence. And uh, at schools, uh, many people only value academic intelligence. But after school, in life, practical intelligence uh, is often much more important. And uh, here we can see uh, the results of uh, the research. In tests for boys and girls, in the uh, Cattell, uh, fluid skills and uh, crystallized skills, the Mill Hill test, the boys and uh, girls from the urban areas uh, have uh, a higher performance. But in our practical intelligence tests, the everyday uh, skills uh, at home, on the street, the UPIC, the Eskimos, had a better performance. Academic uh, intelligence uh, modestly predicted uh, adaptability skills, but not uh, hunting skills in the urban and rural communities. And practical intelligence uh, modestly predicted uh, adaptability skills and uh, moderately predicted uh, hunting skills in the rural communities but uh, not in the urban communities. In other words, the prediction depends on the context. Another uh, research uh, study was carried out in Russia. Well, point four is that practical intellectual skills uh, can be uh, better health predictors than academic skills. And the question in this study was, which is a better predictor of uh, physical and mental health in adults? Academic intelligence that uh, we assess in schools, or the practical intelligence that is more significant in life? And the answer is uh, that although both uh, academic intelligence and uh, practical intelligence uh, predict uh, physical and mental health, Practical intelligence uh, does so at a higher level. And we can see the data here, the correlations with the academic tests and the practical tests. And uh, what we can see is that the uh, practical tests uh, were better predictors of uh, success uh, in physical health and anxiety and depression. Point five, physical health uh, can uh, moderate uh, the performance uh, in the evaluations. When we test uh, the children, we can consider the health of the children and uh, in parts of Spain or in parts of the United States. Most of the children are in good health, but in many parts of the world, the health of uh, boys and girls can be much worse, uh, very bad, very bad. The question is, Do children with uh, uh, parasite uh, illnesses uh, perform worse and by uh, other uh, moderate or severe infections than healthy children in hyative cognitive function tests? 
and this research was carried out in Jamaica in the Caribbean. And what we found was that the boys and girls that are moderately or severely infected perform worse in relation to healthy boys and girls even after uh, controlling the socioeconomic status. In other words, before concluding that uh, a boy or a girl uh, doesn't have uh, too many skills uh, to be successful at school or in life, we need uh, to know uh, more about their health. And the same happens with old people like me. We know that if our health is worse uh, than that of young people, often uh, the uh, mental function is not very good. And the same uh, is true of uh, street children or children in Jamaica. If their health uh, is not good, their function is worse. And uh, the data can be seen here. We had uh, four tests, visual search, memory, reasoning, and uh, motor skills. And uh, in each uh, test, the infected children had a worse performance except for fine motor skills, and we don't know why. But in the more advanced skills, the sick children uh, had a worse performance. Point six is a dynamic evaluation, in other words, when a test is given, instruction, and then another test, there's a, a pretest, an intervention, a post test. This is the uh, dynamic evaluation, and the dynamic evaluation can reveal cognitive skills uh, that uh, are not uh, uh, through static evaluations. This research was uh, out in Tanzania with uh, dynamic evaluations. And the question was, does a dynamic evaluation with a pretest uh, instruction or teaching and post-test of uh, children in uh, rural uh, Tanzania show the hidden intellectual potential and by inference of uh, the boys and girls in urban areas. And the idea is that uh, many children in countries or cultures like Tanzania simply uh, don't have much experience with tests. And when they receive tests, they don't know what to do. And the idea of a dynamic uh, evaluation or assessment is that they uh, take a pretest and then instruction or teaching that can give them not only knowledge uh, about the subject matter, but also uh, knowledge about uh, the tests, about the nature of tests. And uh, the answer is yes. The scores of the participants in the experimental group assessed uh, dynamically improved uh, significantly and uh, additionally significantly more than the scores of the participants in the control group assessed uh, statically. 
and we can see uh, the results here. What uh, we uh, compare here is uh, performance in a pre-test and a post-test for students uh, in a dynamic uh, and control condition. And in the dynamic condition, there is uh, an improvement uh, here of the pre-test uh, and post-test uh, in uh, cognition in the control group uh, where there's uh, no teaching between pre-test uh, and post-test. Uh, there is no significant uh, improvement. In other words, the opportunity uh, to uh, learn a subject matter and the nature of tests can uh, make children obtain better results. This is uh, analysis uh, for uh, uh, serious uh, problems. And uh, again, in the dynamic condition, there is an improvement uh, in performance and in the uh, control uh, group between uh, without uh, teaching between uh, pre-test and post-test the uh, performance uh, goes down and uh, here we can see a 20 question test and again there's a major improvement in the dynamic condition and nothing happens in the control condition and the uh, lesson learned is that uh, many people, including my own children, don't properly understand tests. When I was a child, my scores in the IQ uh, tests were very low. And I think uh, the reason was uh, that uh, I didn't understand the context of a test. And perhaps uh, as a result, I had test anxiety. And with the dynamic assessment, it's uh, possible to reduce the effects of uh, anxiety and uh, lack of knowledge about tests. In the experimental group, the correlation between pre-test and post-test was uh, approximately 0.3, which is uh, significantly uh, lower than the correlation close uh, to uh, 0.8 found in the control group. In other words, uh, for these children, the dynamic test give us a better demonstration of their true skills. I'm very sorry that uh, my uh, Spanish uh, isn't very good, but I don't have too many opportunities hardly any opportunities in the United States to speak Spanish. And uh, the uh, result, as you can hear, is that uh, I don't speak very well. If I had more uh, practice, uh, I hope I could uh, speak better. So, in the experimental group, uh, the post was uh, correlated uh, significantly more with uh, other uh, cognitive measurements, uh, work memory, than the pretest uh, scores. Point seven, new skill tests, cognitive skill tests, reveal new performance aspects in sick children. And the question was, In a test that uh, measures uh, skills to follow teachers' instructions, 
do sick children treated with anti-parasite uh, uh, drugs do better? So if in the classroom there are uh, sick children with uh, parasite infections, if uh, treatment is uh, the result uh, an improvement in their performance, and the answer is yes. The boys and girls assessed in this test, the ZK test, whose uh, parasite uh, diseases were treated, had a better performance uh, than the boys and girls that were not uh, treated with regard to their initial performance. In other words, if uh, there are sick children in the classroom, their illnesses uh, should be treated before uh, measuring their uh, skills and their performance. And uh, the difference can be seen here. With more instruction in each group, there uh, is a better performance. And uh, the uh, lines refer to a different amounts of instruction. Okay, point eight. We have uh, spoken about uh, intelligence in other cultures, and the idea in general is that performance in intelligent tests depend on many factors. We cannot give uh, an IQ test and draw conclusions without considering the context. And now we think about uh, intelligence concepts or implicit uh, uh, theories of intelligence. And point eight is that intelligence uh, can be different in different cultures. We carried out studies uh, with ordinary people and professionals in the United States and in Taiwan and in Kenya. And what we found is that in the United States, the implicit factors in the concepts of intelligence uh, were uh, practical problem solving, verbal skills, and uh, uh, social skills. And only uh, verbal skills uh, are measured uh, through uh, the IQ tests. In Taiwan, there are five factors. Cognitive uh, skills, interpersonal uh, competence or skills, in other words, with people, intrapersonal skills, that's uh, knowledge about oneself, and these are factors uh, such as the one in Howard Gardner's uh, theory. And also uh, knowing when to uh, show uh, one's intelligence in public, when uh, intelligence uh, should be shown. For example, uh, try to show your intelligence when you give a presentation like this one. Knowing when not to uh, show your own intelligence in public. For example, if uh, you have uh, an intimate uh, uh, romantic date, it's uh, probably uh, not the occasion to show uh, your intelligence or your knowledge of physics or mathematics. And sometimes uh, people try to show their intelligence uh, in uh, unsuitable contexts. In Kenya, there were four intelligence uh, concepts, uh, Rieko, which uh, includes uh, knowledge, uh, skills. These uh, basically are knowledge uh, skills, but also practical skills. Luoro, which is respect, Paro, which is initiative, and Wingho comprehension of uh, the complexities uh, 
in a problem situation. And here the idea is that only uh, Rieko is measured uh, in the intelligence test, but uh, Rieko includes much more than uh, knowledge in the intelligence test. Point nine. The uh, evaluations uh, made of students uh, by the teachers are limited uh, by uh, their concepts of intelligence. And this was a study uh, carried out on the intelligence uh, concepts of parents at teachers in San Jose, California. And the question was, do uh, children uh, from a uh, particular ethnic group uh, perform better at the school if uh, the uh, intelligence concepts of the parents match those of the teachers? In other words, in each uh, ethnic group, the concept of intelligence is uh, a little different. The uh, mothers, the fathers in one group uh, emphasize uh, in their children different skills uh, to uh, that of other cultures. And the result is uh, that a child may be intelligent at home, but at school they are not considered to be very intelligent. And the answer was yes. Anglo-American and uh, Asian American parents emphasized uh, uh, cognitive skills uh, in their concept of intelligence. But uh, Hispano American parents uh, emphasized uh, social skills. The teachers uh, emphasized uh, cognitive skills. In other words, uh, the uh, concepts of intelligence uh, were very similar between uh, teachers and the uh, parents of Anglo-American students and uh, Asian-American students. But uh, the, uh, the uh, Latin American parents and students uh, had different uh, concepts of intelligence that uh, emphasized social skills more. And the result was uh, that uh, the uh, teachers didn't see them as being very intelligent. The teachers valued more the skills of uh, the Anglo-American and Asian-American boys and girls than the of uh, the uh, Latin American boys and girls. It doesn't mean that one group is than the other. The compatibility between the implicit uh, was uh, for the Anglo-American and Asian-American uh, parents in relation to the teachers. We carried out another study uh, with uh, Yupik Eskimos. And uh, when uh, secondary school Yupik uh, students in Alaska study uh, geometric concepts triarchically, analytically, practically, and creatively, they perform better than students that study the same concepts uh, in a conventional way regardless uh, of uh, the assessment uh, system. In other words, when the uh, strengths of students are taught and the UPIC students, uh, their strengths are more practical. And uh, when uh, fishing examples are used, uh, and Eskimos do a lot of fishing, their performance is better. And a lot of the content uh, at school is very abstract. 
and uh, doesn't have much uh, relevance with everyday life. And uh, the result is that students, uh, particularly the uh, UPIC, uh, achieve a good performance. So uh, we worked on a uh, project, uh, the Rainbow Project, and the idea is uh, that the uh, same uh, concepts apply in the United States. In other words, uh, when uh, children at schools in Ithaca, New York, or New Haven, Connecticut, are used, the concepts are the same. The students uh, have a better performance when their skill pattern is considered. If uh, their strengths are taught and not just their weaknesses, performance is better. Thank you uh, very much uh, for giving me the, this uh, opportunity today. I'm very sorry uh, once again that I couldn't be over there, but uh, I hope that we'll have other opportunities in the future. Uh, see you. Ciao. Thank you.